And now, look, incredible from Britain, uh, you know, because I, I hope that the Prime Minister does back his words about fighting the cancel culture and any policies with actions, because if he doesn't, we will become like Britain, because look at this. We have a 71-year-old Christian preacher out in the streets talking about how the Bible taught that marriage was between a man and a woman. Yeah, if you don't like it, move on, go keep shopping. Police actually arrested him. They hit him. I think they kicked him, if you look at the video, and they handcuffed him for alleged hate speech. They're arresting the dear man, look. They're arresting him. Oh, 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 Absolutely extraordinary. Joining me from Britain is Brendan O'Neill, columnist and editor of the online magazine Spiked, which is a, a great read. Brendan, I would never have guessed that one day I would see footage like that from the country that gave us uh, one of the greatest poems in defence of free speech by John Milton, uh, made a tradition of it. In the name of compassion and of tolerance, police then attack and handcuff a 71-year-old preacher for simply opening his mouth. What's happened to your country? Uh, nothing good. I mean, it's, it's a grotesque situation what that happened to that preacher you know he was as you said he was just reading from the bible he was citing the bible's definition of marriage as be being between a man and a woman some people reported him from he for hate speech and then he was arrested in a pretty violent way this is a vile assault on freedom of religion and a vile assault on freedom of speech and this is not the first time a christian pastor has been arrested in the uk for saying things that are supposedly homophobic or supposedly offensive Offensive. It, we have a situation now where in Britain it is almost a speech crime to read the Bible in public, to profess the Christian <laughs> faith in public. And that should worry everyone who believes in freedom of religion and freedom of speech. What's happening is that the category of hate speech is increasingly being used to control moral thought itself and the right of people to express their deeply held beliefs. Brandon, I'm just staggered. Uh, race politics, too, seems as bad in Britain as it is in the US. Maybe even worse. I don't know. Horrible History is a great series of children's books. Uh, my daughter in particular loved it, teaching history with fun facts. And it's been spun off then to a popular TV show. But now it says it's got to respond to the Black Lives Matter movement with a black history show that says Britons were black before the island was British, based on the supposed skin colour of Cheddar Man a fossil found in some sort of a man who lived 10,000 years ago and is thought to maybe have had skin that was dark brown. Why is it so important to go out of its way to teach children that someone who lived in Britain 10,000 years ago may have been brown? It's ridiculous. I mean, it's just another part of the woke re-education that we're, we are all tragically living through. I mean, you know, the, the fact of the matter is Britain at the moment is a diverse country. The vast majority of people in the UK have no problem at all with our black citizens and our Asian citizens and all the other non-white citizens who make a huge contribution to this country. The idea that we need this kind of rewriting of history to try and make us less prejudiced, to convince us that actually uh, black people were here long before anyone else. It's just this use of history, this use and abuse of history to try and re-educate the public and make sure that we don't have any residual racist feelings. That's, I think, the wrong way to approach history. It's the wrong way to approach public broadcasting. And I think they've got to start taking their audiences a bit more seriously. We're not going to fall for this nonsense. Well, it's almost like they think, uh, you know, black children won't identify with this wonderful country called Britain that their parents or grandparents busted a gut to get to unless they know that someone was there first who was brown. I mean, what, what a re to reduce everything like that is just ridiculous. Brendan O'Neill, thank you so much indeed for your time. Thanks, Andrew.